Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Sex on the Internet, This uh, my final presentation for the Technology and Public Purpose Fellowship. Um, what's going to happen today is I'm going to talk about my research um, for around 20, 25 minutes, and then we're going to switch to a panel with a couple of our distinguished guests. Um, this event is part of the TAP Center's uh, Perspectives on Public Purpose Week. Um, there's a few more going on um, after this as well, so I encourage you to go to the website and check that out. This presentation part will be recorded. Um, the panel won't, so we're going to end the recording after I get to the end of my talky part. Um, and we will be doing Q&A for either me or for the panel, so go ahead and please throw those into the Q&A box um, at any point, whenever you feel like. So. My project for the past nine months has been researching the censorship of sexual content on social media and ways we might make that space a bit more sex positive. The first question when I start talking to anybody about this work is, okay, that's, that's great, but what exactly does it mean to be sex positive, which is a very good question, uh, and the first thing that we're going to talk about here today. So what is sex positivity? I have spent a lot of time um, coming up with kind of a very precise definition. Uh, the word itself came from the middle of the 20th century. It's usually credited to a guy named Wilhelm Reich. And it's been defined a lot of different ways over the years, sometimes con contradictorily. So this is what I came up with after a lot of feedback and reviews. Sex positivity is the idea that all forms of consensual sexual activity involving adults can be celebrated. Now this includes, but is of course not limited to, straight sex, gay sex, sex works, abstinence, kink, masturbation, monogamy, polyamory. You can be really into it, you can be really not. Um, there's so many different options, but all the forms are valid. Anything consensual involving adults are valid. I view, I view a sex positive world as one in which all people are comfortable with their own unique kind of sexuality, where they all have set their own healthy boundaries and can communicate about sex without fear or shame. Uh, in this world, everyone has access to accurate information and supportive community and groups such as like family schools and internet platforms uh, make space for this to happen. Sex is an integral part of human society and repressing it leads to real harm for both individuals and communities. Now, sex itself can be used as a tool to harm others. Uh, and many people have very complicated feelings around uh, sex and sexual desire. And those two are things that we need to make space for and respect. Basically, the full diverse reality of human sexuality deserves respect and inclusion in our social discourse. Now, the point of my research is that most modern internet platforms do not do this. Uh, and especially during COVID, when so much of our interpersonal communication goes through these digital mediums, what happens when there's this big slice of our life that isn't allowed to be talked about? So I'll start by going over in a little bit of the kind of current state of the way things are. So these are uh, nine, Facebook and Instagram have the same principles. These are nine of the most popular social media platforms in America. As you can see, only two of them allow nudity and sexual content, Twitter and Reddit. And both of those have all that content behind kind of click to view 18 plus warnings. Um, neither of them are perfect, but they are the ones that allow this content. Interesting to note um, out of this grid is that both Snapchat and Tumblr started by allowing this content. In fact, they had huge communities that grew around this content. You can argue that they got popular because of this content. And then once they were big, they changed their policy and that stuff is no longer allowed on there. Uh, now, all of these do have exceptions. Um, educational content is a pretty universal one. Uh, breastfeeding photos, things uh, around mastectomy scars um, or things similar things are usually allowed uh, via policy. Um, but as we will see, policy and reality are very different. So I'm gonna give you a quick uh, kind of live demo before I get into any of my like rants or information, I'm gonna give you a quick live demo of what I'm talking about. So let me go here. Boop. Um, my friend Lily has graciously agreed to let me use our messenger for this. So, this is a page on Scarletine, which is a um, pretty well known in the sex ed community website, providing um, kind of information uh, about sex and relationships, specifically for teenagers. Like it's, it's really inclusive, it's really informative, it's a very good site. This is their page on barrier use. It is literally instructions on how to use a condom. This is about as uh, pure educational content as you can get. I am going to take this link and try to send it to my friend Lily in Facebook Messenger. She'll love this article. What's this? This little red thing. All I get is an error. It just refuses to send it. It just refuses to send it. 
I cannot send a link to how to use a condom via a one-to-one -one private message on Facebook. Now, this isn't all how to use a condoms. If we go over to uh, Google and do a search for how to use a condom real quick, we can see that one of the first results is the CDC site on how to use a condom. And if we take this and bring it over here, let's try sending that instead. That one goes through fine. I'm sure teenagers uh, will love going to the CDC for all of their sex related information. Now, this is only what happens now. Um, I became aware of this particular feature, uh, actually it was in my application for the fellowship. But back then, what happened looked a little different. Um, when I tried to send this link, this is what came up, a big angry red message that said it couldn't be shared, it's not gonna be shared, here's why, and let us know, an appeals link. Um, for the record, I've been testing this periodically over the last 10 months, and I've submitted that appeals link about 10 times by now, and it still doesn't leave us in the link. So that's a thing. All right, so the next kind of thing we need to talk about and define is what do I mean by sexual content? Uh, condom use instructions are usually not what people think about when they're like, oh, sex on the internet. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what that generally uh, encompasses. So it's a range, as all things are. On one side, you have stuff that's kind of obviously bad, should be removed. Um, some of this is illegal stuff, and then the penis growth pills one is just a personal pet peeve of mine. Um, they don't work. Uh, and they're really predatory and I don't think they should be allowed. On the other side is some kind of obviously good stuff, educational informational, education information, uh, community support stuff, and then a category I call sexy but not sexual. A lot of selfies fall into this range, um, stuff that is clearly not nudity, clearly not sexual activity, but like has a sexual theme nonetheless. People generally agree that that should be left on social media because it's a lot of what's on social media. And that leaves us with this giant gray zone in the middle. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. There may in fact uh, be as many as 50 different shades of gray in the middle there. Um, here's just a few examples of things that kind of fall into this what is questionable content thing. Not what most people think about when they think about stuff that you can't put on Facebook. Um, and yet it all falls prey to the same rules. So when we're looking at this range, the next question we have to ask is where do you draw the line? If you're going to start putting rules around this stuff on a social media platform, you've got to make this decision at some point. So let's look at a couple different models. The first one is just the law, right? These things are illegal um, at both the federal and state level. Uh, revenge porn is kind of half and half. Most, but not all of the US states uh, have laws against non-consensually sharing someone else's intimate images. Um, but for the most part, it's illegal. The next line is what we might call a strict sex positive stance. This is basically everything that doesn't cause harm. Like you might have issues with some of the stuff in the middle, but it's not actively causing harm. And it's, we're, we're gonna kind of define that as like the stuff that's okay. And then you have where the social media policies are. Again, policy, not reality. Um, they generally cover all the stuff that's obviously good. They cover some of the stuff in complicated ways that's in the middle. However, here is where the line kind of actually is in reality. It's very confusing, it's all over the place. Um, it contradicts itself sometimes and it's just not what you expect. So some of the realities of this are that it's just very unclear how the policies are applied or what the rules actually mean. Um, as several of our panelists can tell you, it, stuff that's really clearly educational content gets taken down all the time. Um, nudity is really unclear, leaving aside the issue of what the hell female breasts or female nipples mean. Um, stuff where the chest and the genitals are completely covered, but it shows a lot of skin gets taken down a lot, even though it's not strictly uh, disallowed by the nudity policy. Um, and also a lot of people I talked to had very different ideas about why or whom or when stuff got taken down. Like there, there's just no transparency about how this stuff works. This is a weird one. Identical content gets removed from one account, but not from another. Um, a particular comic I saw going around was posted by a lot of celebrity accounts and then by a lot of smaller accounts. And several of the smaller accounts had it removed from Instagram, but it was still up on all of the big celebrity accounts. Um, this seems like an easy one for them to moderate because it's literally identical content that's getting reposted. So that's very confusing to me. Sex workers of all kinds just routinely get kicked off these platforms, even if they're not promoting their work there. Um, and when I say sex workers, um, a lot of people just think about the people who kind of like have sex for money and they are included in here. But what we're talking about is also a lot of the things that are very legal, right? We've got um, porn stars, cam workers, strippers, uh, pro doms. There's a lot of stuff in there that is 
perfectly legal and allowable, but they still get kicked off the platform, even if it's their personal account, even if they're not using the accounts to do their jobs. If they find out that they are sex workers, they can sometimes get kicked off. Um, that's, that's a bigger scope than really what I'm going to cover here. There's an excellent organization called Hacking Hustling that I'd love to refer you to if you're interested in learning more about that situation. <sighs> this is a bad one. Basically, the further you are from a thin, young, straight, femme, white woman, the more likely you are to have your content removed. I don't think this is intentional, but this is, seems to be how it works. Um, the more kind of a minority voice you are, the more likely you are to be suppressed on these platforms. Just kind of the, the law of numbers game seems to be a lot into this. You're less popular, so you have less people, so you're more likely to get harassed, so you're more likely to have your content removed. It's, it's bad. It's just a whole thing. And the last one is that some rules are just really strange. Um, there's one in particular that I can never get out of my head. Uh, and it's about um, grabbing female breasts. Like a woman fully clothed is allowed to put her hand on her own breast, but if she squeezes it such that the breast is deformed and you can see the deformation between her fingers, then it's not allowed on Facebook or Instagram. Like that is a very specific rule they have set in their policies. That's just very strange. Okay. So that's where we're at. Uh, the next question is, why is this a problem? Um, well, sex is important and real and uh, it's complicated. It's not some magical thing that you get really good at without ever talking about. Sex is a, it's a part of life. Even if you're not into it yourself, it sure as hell affects you through society probably every day. Um, as I said, you know, during the pandemic more than ever, we're using these digital platforms to communicate and this part of our life is just kind of not allowed. Um, now, perhaps these rules are a little unsurprising because uh, our society is really fucked up about sex. We're inundated with it in ads and news and movies on the street. Um, we've got this crazy duality where like rape culture gets romanticized in romance movies, but an exposed breast is dangerous on the internet. Um, you know, with the Me Too movement, it's finally become easier to talk about the assault and harassment that so many people experience, but we still can't talk about pleasure. Pleasure, AKA the reason why most people have sex. All these platforms have call outs to make it okay for you to learn about stuff for educational content, unless the thing you wanna learn is what turns you on and then it's bad again. We treat it like it's this corrupting, dangerous, shameful thing, but also mandatory in very specific ways that capitalism can exploit. Nowhere in any of that is there room for like the reality of things, for the reality of human sexuality. Let's take a quick look at where these rules appear in some of the policies for these platforms. So these are just three screenshots of the table of contents of the community guidelines. You see on your Facebook, uh, you've got hate speech, violent content, sexual activity. In TikTok, it's right underneath harassment and bullying. And in YouTube, it's paired with suicide and self-injury. I have read a lot of these content policies during this fellowship. And there's kind of five buckets of content that you can see repeated again and again um, that is routinely taken down from these platforms. And it's these five. Now, this is what is removed from almost all online platforms. Think about if all five of these things were completely removed from your life tomorrow, would you be happy about that? Or is there one thing in particular that you might miss a little bit? One of these things is not really like the others, but it gets treated like them a lot of the time. So the biggest question of all is why? Why do these generally democratic leaning, mostly California based, uh, claiming to be left wing social media companies deal with sex this way? Well, uh, the fellowship gave me an opportunity to talk to a lot of people on that side. And so here is a list of some of the reasons that I was given. Exactly nobody said, because we're sex negative, because we don't want this content on, uh, because we think it's bad for people to see. Nobody said that reason. Um, what they did say a lot, and this is pulled directly from Facebook's community guidelines, is some people in our community may be sensitive to this type of content. A lot of people don't like it. They don't want to see it on the platform. I don't find this reason particularly compelling. Um, I think this is a great way for them to say that we didn't make the decision these other people did. Like, we're not taking a stand on this. It's the, these people are sensitive to this type of content. There are a lot of places in the world um, that are less sensitive to this, AKA see the female nipples thing and most of Europe. 
Um, there are a lot of places in the world that are more sensitive to stuff that Facebook does leave up. Uh, they also have definitely chosen to take a stand on certain issues. Um, I'll never forget, uh, I was working at Google during the Sochi Olympics and they put up a giant rainbow flag on the Google homepage. It's this big like middle finger to Russia uh, for their anti-LGBT policies. Um, really clear example of a company knowing that people are gonna be sensitive to this kind of content and very intentionally deciding to support it anyways. Um, so this phrase feels like a cop out for companies to not pretend like they're not taking a stand on this content. All right, it's illegal. I hear this a lot. It's complicated. SESTA FOSTA is a whole thing. Um, the answer is no, it's really not. Otherwise, Twitter and Reddit couldn't get away with it. Um, it you know, your lawyers will probably warn you against having this type of stuff because it is complicated, but it's not illegal. It's too hard to draw the line. My response to this one is always, it's also really hard to tell the difference between sexual and non-sexual content, as I just illustrated in the preceding like 40 slides. Um, again, it feels like they're trying to get out of making a choice. Like, oh, it's too hard. Well, it's really hard here too, but you decided to do it here and not here. It's a money thing. Advertisers would get upset. This one I actually can't really argue with because it is true. Um, I heard from some folks in there that over the last five to 10 years, advertisers have actually gotten a lot more conservative about what they will allow to be placed next to their ads. Some of this probably has to do with uh, the kind of increasing amount of attention paid to this type of stuff um, with kind of the hate speech arguments and all of that. Um, but it really feeds into kind of this like self-repeating loop cycle that I'll go into in a minute. Last one, there's too much spam. Um, you know, uh, I heard from someone that as soon as you open your platform to porn, it just gets these floods of spam and abuse and scams. Uh, and there were some New York Times articles about this happening to Parler uh, a few months ago when that was all going down. Um, spam is actually not that hard to deal with. If you look at Facebook's um, reports on content moderation, you can see just how much spam they block. Like this isn't, this isn't a sexual thing. Spam and scams of abuse can be sexual. There's a lot of it that's not. Um, and almost 100% of the spam on Facebook is taken down by AI, not uh, human content moderators. So like, that's a hard problem, but Facebook solves a lot of hard problems. So this is, this is the cycle I kind of keep thinking about during this fellowship. Um, we're in a society that treats sex as shameful and dangerous and hard to talk about. The social media companies adopt these existing societal standards that they're just kind of steeped in from all around. And then society uses the social media where it's really difficult to talk about sex and it's treated as shameful and dangerous. And then society treats sex that way. And then we just get into this big uh, self-repeating loop where things get worse. I've thought a lot about what could happen if we change those social media companies to adopt sex positive standards, where, the so where society started using sites where it wasn't difficult to talk about sex, where they could see a variety of content, where they could see a bunch of different examples uh, where stuff could be could be normalized and talked about. Um, maybe if we started changing that, then we could start changing that top one too. So some ideas for a better model. Um, I'm a really big fan of the opt-in to view thing. Consent is obviously really important everywhere in sexuality. Um, it is in viewing it online as well. Both Twitter and Reddit have models where you can <clears throat> click to view uh, sensitive content like this. Uh, Twitter does a thing where it's it's self-selected, like the user can choose to do it, but it's at an account level, so an account has to be clicked to view. Um, I really love the idea of a post level, like when you upload a thing, you could say, hey, this is adult slash sexual slash sensitive, whatever content, you know, put it behind an opt-in filter. Um, that way it could be just part of life, just part of the stream, you know, when we're doing something, you can acknowledge it as sexual and hide it from the people who don't want to see it. Really big fan of that model. Transparent content moderation policies. I am not the only one who wants this. Everyone who works in disinformation and hate speech is also talking about this. Uh, we just need more information about how this stuff works. Similarly, more effective appeals process. As I said, I have submitted the link to that Scarletine condoms page so many times, um, gotten no feedback, nothing's been done. I just, we need to know how that works uh, in something where you can submit more information, more process there. I'd like for them to actually follow their own rules as mentioned, a lot of stuff that's not really nudity and is educational content gets taken down, even though that's called out in the policies. Um, you know, I'll admit right now, content moderation is hard. It's a very hard problem. Uh, it's really hard to get it right. And so there's always going to be some slippage. It's never going to be perfect, but it would be great to do better on that. The last one, 
again, slightly out of scope for the rest of this project, but decriminalize and destigmatize sex work. If that doesn't seem like it makes sense with the rest of this content, think about who makes this content. Porn is made by porn stars, they're sex workers, and they get treated like shit a lot of times for it. Often by the same people who watch their content. Um, it goes hand in hand with creating a sex positive world is respecting the people who work in these fields. Okay, so you might be saying, great, Claire, that sounds nice. How the hell are we gonna do that? Well, I had nine months and it was just me to do this. So I don't have any uh, definite answers for you just yet. <clears throat> but um, I am today uh, launching a project that I'm gonna be working on after this fellowship. I'm calling it the Nectarine Project. Um, yes, I'm using the peach emoji as my logo. Um, very pleased with that choice I am. Uh, this is going to be a sex positive lobbying and advocacy group. Um, I've got some presents set up. If you want to check us out, we're going to be at nectarineproject.org, nectarineproject on Instagram, or nectarineproject on Twitter because there's a character count limit. Uh, if any of you have been following me on Instagram, you know I've been doing a lot of writing for this fellowship about the sex, posit the sex policies of social media and digging deep into like Supreme Court cases and stuff like that. That's going to continue but move over to Nectarine Project. And hopefully we're going to start doing um, some more hearts and minds stuff uh, to see if we can get Silicon Valley and DC to recognize this as a problem and maybe do something. So that's uh, my next adventure in the world. Um, we'll see what happens with that. It's still an experiment, but right now we are going to switch over to our esteemed panel. Yay. Uh, I've got three folks coming in. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of community